The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route update. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Michael Matheson. Cabinet Secretary, 10 minutes, please. Uh, President Officer, I welcome this opportunity to update Parliament on the AWPR, the most extensive road construction project in the UK. I'm proud that this Scottish Government is delivering this long-awaited project, working with their partners in Aberdeen City Council and Aberdeenshire Council. It's expected to generate over £6 billion in additional income to the northeast of Scotland and create over 14,000 jobs in its first 30 years of operation. It will boost the economy, increase business and tourism opportunities, improve safety and cut congestion, as well as improve opportunities for public transport facilities. The bypass was first proposed in the late 1940s, and it took until 2007 for this government to progress this project in a meaningful way. After one of the longest public local inquiries ever held in Scotland and legal challenges submitted in May 2010 and subsequent appeals, the AWPR contract was awarded in December 2014 to Aberdeen Roads Limited or ARL, a joint venture company comprising Balfour Beatty, Carillion and Gilliford Tri. As construction progressed, the contractor cited delays attributable to factors including the, cumul the cumulative effect of weather events and the well-publicised collapse of Carillion. On the 22nd of March this year, my predecessor, Keith Brown, made a statement to this parliament advising the potential for a late autumn 2018 opening. Despite assurances from the contractor, its target was to open the project by August 2018. Contractors are often, often ambitious with their targets to motivate and challenge the workforce, but as events transpired, our more, ca more cautious view has proved correct. We have worked tirelessly with the contractor to establish further measures to ensure the project is not only delivered at the earliest opportunity, but also to identify if sections of the new road could be opened in advance. The sections already opened to traffic include the uh, Cribstone to Dice section, uh, junction, the seven kilometre section between Black Dog and Park Hill, and the 12 kilometre section between Balmedy and Tipperty. Drivers are already enjoying significant benefits as a result of these improvements. However, in May, ARL reported a technical issue on the Dawn crossing structure. Many defects were identified while post-tensioning a small number of concrete panels. These have subsequently proved to be more extensive than originally anticipated, albeit in a localised area of the structure. Repairs have continued alongside construction work, with the ARL reporting it remained on target for a late autumn opening. However, last Friday, October the 26th, Transport Scotland was informed that a greater scope of work would be necessary to repair the defects. The contractor has undertaken a full investigation into these defects and this has been the subject of rigorous independent challenge. They are working hard to repair the defects and on Monday of this week the contractor reported it was targeting a December opening date for the whole road. However, they were unable to provide a definitive date for the opening of this section as there are a number of factors which could influence this date including technical issues and other physical factors such as the weather. We will continue to work closely with ARL to ensure everything that can reasonably be done is being done and we will provide a definitive date for the opening of this section as soon as possible. Safety remains our top priority and there has not and will not be a risk to public safety or the safety of the men and women working on this project. While the issues reported require time to remedy, it's important to recognise that they were found because of the rigorous 
quality control and design checks built into this project. It's also important to note the costs of these repairs lie with ARL and will not impact on the public purse. ARL only receive payment on sections of the road open to traffic. Our primary responsibility must be to ensure these works are completed safely to the required quality standards. The River Dawn crossing section will not open until Transport Scotland officials and I have confidence this is the case. I believe the Chamber and the public as a whole will understand and support this position. For some months now, Transport Scotland has been working with the contractor to investigate the potential to open the 31.5 kilometre section from Cribstone to Stonehaven and Charleston with ARL. In order to do this, a variation will be required to the original contract. Earlier this week, I spoke to Peter Truscott, Chief Executive of Galliford Tri, to receive an update on the progress they were making in discussing this variation with their lenders. Mr Truscott confirmed ARL's commitment to the project and offered assurances it is doing everything possible with the right level of resources to open the road at the earliest opportunity. The clear indication from Mr Truscott was ARL was making the necessary changes to the AWP contra AWPR contract to open this section. Signed also, despite these assurances, I was disappointed to receive a letter from Mr Truscott yesterday morning which cast yet more doubt on this mutually beneficial solution. The letter suggests ARL has yet to agree to open this section of the road and furthermore, apparently, has yet to even advise its lenders of the draft terms that have been on the table for a considerable time. This is despite verbal assurances to the contrary on Monday. This kind of inconsistency is frustrating efforts to progress opening of the Curbstone to Stonehaven and Charleston as it will require the lender's agreement in order to take it forward. In agreeing to this substantial change to the contract, the Scottish Government has a duty to protect the public interest, always maintaining a balance between opening sections of the road, releasing appropriate payment to the contractor at a time when it is dealing with the financial pressures of an overrunning project and maintaining the right level of incentive to finish the job. Additionally, President Officer, there have been some inaccurate rumours circulating in the North East media that this section of road has been ready to open for some time. Despite daily discussions to progress this, Mr Truscott's letter confirms there is no contractual mechanism to allow, it, allow this to happen. I have been urging the contractor to conclude these deliberations for some time. I repeated this to him on Monday and I've reiterated it in writing today. There's no time for the contractor to stop deliberating and start acting. It now has to take the necessary steps to open the majority of this road and let the people of the North East enjoy the benefits they have been so patiently anticipating. I've therefore asked for unequivocal confirmation that the agreement is being progressed and when it will be concluded. Transport Scotland has been accused of a lack of transparency over opening dates. As has been repeatedly made clear, Transport Scotland can only advise of the expected opening date when ARL report it is ready, which was expected until very recently to be late autumn. It has been impossible to be any more specific while remedial work at the dawn was ongoing and in the absence of ARL's agreement to open further sections. It's a matter of public record that ARL has advanced a commercial claim in relation to the project. This claim is not related to the current issues at the dawn or opening sections of the road. I fully appreciate that this has been a challenging project, project for ARL, not least with the collapse of its delivery partner, Carillion. It's well known this has presented commercial pressures for the contractors. 
However, there is a, fully, a truly exceptional infrastructure project waiting to be used by people and businesses of the North East. Clearly, this needs to remain the single focus of all parties until the project opens to traffic. Transport Scotland will continue to work positively with ARL towards a prompt resolution to its current technical issues. Presenting officer, I'm fully aware of the eagerness with which the people of the North East are waiting for their new road. I will be, it will be nothing short of transformative for the economy and the community as a whole. I trust what I've set out here today will leave no one in any doubt as to the efforts being made to open further sections of the AWPR as fully to road traffic when possible. And that will continue to be the case until we can get consideration of this with ARL. Thank you. Uh, I have about 20 uh, minutes to allow questions. So those who want to ask a question, please press the request to speak button. I'd ask people to be concise. I know a lot of you want to get into this. Liam Kerr, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Now, I appreciate that the Cabinet Secretary has only been in the job a very short time and has no history in this area. So let me remind him that the SNP said the AWPR would be open in the winter of 2017-18. They then said March 2018. Then this year's programme for government, we were told it was late autumn 2018. Now we are told, again, at the 11th hour, there are further delays, and the Cabinet Secretary cannot provide the people of the North East with a firm opening date. Today's statement lists various structural, contractual and communication problems that make clear that his latest teaser, that it might be December, is clearly never going to happen. Now look, decent businesses would have predicted these kind of issues and delays months ago and made provision. It is a disgrace that the Scottish Government has failed to do so, but all too predictable given that it blames everybody except itself. So I ask the Cabinet Secretary, given that one would assume he has interrogated the contractor as to the bridge delays, the contract delays, and the alleged lack of communication, what is a realistic time for this road to open in full. And furthermore, according to his statement, this whole project is characterised by a loss of control between ARL, Transport Scotland and the Cabinet Secretary. People will feel that the Scottish Government has lost its grip on this process. Are they wrong? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Senator Officer, in relation to his final point, the answer is uh, no. Uh, and the reality is that it's a bit rich to get lectures from Conservative Party members in here who over decades within the UK government failed to actually deliver yeah. on the Aberdeen yeah, Western absolutely. Peripheral Route. So we take absolutely no lectures from the Conservatives when it comes to delivering on infrastructure in this country and in particular within the North East of Scotland. The member says that we should have anticipated these types of problems. Well, the reality is a road which is some 58 kilometres long that has over 100 different structures on it, it is difficult to anticipate every technical issue that may arise at the, at, when it comes to dealing with some of these particular types of projects. This is a major infrastructure project, and there will always be challenges with major infrastructure projects and technical issues which will arise. And the member will be well aware as to the reasons as to why there have been delays part of which has been because of uh, weather events, uh, which have had a significant impact on the contractor. Uh, alongside that, the moving of some of the utilities that had to be undertaken by other agencies in time for them to carry out some of the work which they've been carrying forward. However, the most recent uh, delays have been coming about as a result of a technical issue with this particular bridge. And the issue about opening up the section that could be opened is an issue that has to be agreed with the contractor through a contract variation. That contract variation has been on the table for the contractor to agree to for a considerable period of time. And that's why it's now time for them to agree to that, to allow the section that can be opened to be opened up to traffic as quickly as possible. While at the same time, making sure they make progress on the technical issues on the bridge on the River Don, but they do so in a way that assures safety and quality of that work. And that's exactly what's going on just now. Colin Smith, followed by Maureen Watt. Thank you, President Officer. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. It was in 2003 when then First Minister Jack McConnell announced plans for an Aberdeen Western peripheral route. President Officer, 16 years later, it's just not good enough that the Transport Secretary cannot give Parliament today a firm date when this road will open, other than to say the latest promise of late autumn 2018 is now 
worthless. Now, in his statement, the Cabinet Secretary says there are technical issues on the Don Crossing. The Government previously reported these were minor. Today, the Cabinet Secretary says they are extensive. What guarantees can he give that these extensive defects will, in fact, be repaired by December? And are any of these defects similar to those that were identified when the Queensbury Crossing was built? In other words, has there been a fundamental problem with the pouring of the concrete? Do we have the details of what those defects are? Now, the Cabinet Secretary says there are contractual problems with the opening of the 31 and a half kilometres section from Crabston to Stonehaven and Charleston. Contracts, of course, are a two-way process. So what lessons has the government learned from these contractual arrangements to ensure that we do not see this lack of flexibility repeating in future projects? Because the reality is this is not the first and it's not the last major transport project that's been late under this government's watch. Now, I understand... No, I'm final... sorry, you've had a minute. Could you just conclude? Well, I understand that the final cost won't be... Extensive cost won't be more to the public purse, but can the Cabinet Secretary tell Parliament today what will, in fact, the final building cost be of this road? Cabinet Secretary. So let me deal with the, the issues in turn. In terms of uh, the defects, uh, the defects will require more detailed remedial action to be undertaken uh, to deal with these issues. And that's what ARL reported last Friday to Transport Scotland uh, in dealing with the, uh, uh, the River Don uh, Bridge. Uh, what we have within Transport Scotland is we also have our technical advisors who have got oversight of this work to make sure it's been conducted to the proper uh, standards. In relation to the contract point which the member uh, raised, uh, this type of contract has been used for the delivery of other roads in the past uh, uh, in a very effective uh, way as well, whether it be the uh, M8, M73, M74, uh, the M80, uh, hags to uh, steps bypass in my own constituency uh, and delivers these types of roads in an effective way as well. There is a a way in which this matter can be dealt with, and as through a variation to the contract, that offer has been on the table with the contractors for a considerable period of time, and it's for them to agree that with their lenders in order to open up the section which is available to do so. And that's why I've called upon them uh, to make sure that they take that forward as quickly as possible. In relation to uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the contract and also the, 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 the points the member was making in relation to um, how we uh, manage these types of contracts, uh, Transport Scotland have got a, a very good track record and been able to deliver uh, in very complex infrastructure projects. We saw that from the Audit Scotland report fairly recently uh, with the Queensferry uh, crossing uh, and the way in which uh, that was handled. Uh, and they are taking the same type of approach with this particular uh, road to make sure that it's delivered uh, to the best quality uh, and to the highest standards and it will serve the people of the North East for the years ahead. But you can be assured of one thing, I'll continue to put pressure on the contractors to open up the section of the road that can be opened and to get that agreement with their lenders sooner rather than later. I've been trying to pursue that for a considerable period of time with them for, on this particular issue. Thank you. I have 11 people wanting to ask questions. I'm 11 minutes, so I want people to be concise and fair to their colleagues. Ms Watt, followed by Peter Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary has heard the calls for the ADWPR to be opened as soon as possible, or at least that part, those parts of the route that appear to be finished. While I haven't been around since the 1940s, I have been waiting for this all my life, and it's taken an SNP government at last to construct this. So I am prepared to wait for a few months longer for this major construction project to be fully completed. However, what can the Scottish Government do to ensure that Aberdeen Roads Limit do get agreement with their financial backers to partially open parts of the route as soon as possible, as I understand that's possibly where the blockage lies? Cabinet Secretary. Signing off, sir, it is unfortunate that there have been particular technical issues with the uh, Dawn Crossing. And uh, I want to give the member assurance and all members an assurance that the contractors, along with Transport Scotland, are working hard to resolve these as soon as possible. Uh, as I mentioned in my uh, statement, I spoke to the Chief Executive of uh, Guilford Tri, Peter uh, Truscott, earlier this week uh, to make the very point uh, to him about the need to make sure the section of the road which could be opened is opened as quickly as possible and that they were making progress with the lenders for that very purpose. Uh, I was disappointed that some 40 hours later I get a letter from him uh, saying that they have yet to put it to the lenders despite what he had told me uh, on Monday and the work that had been taken forward by Transport Scotland over a period of time to try and get this agreement. And that's why I'm uh, now seeking uh, to have a meeting with the board of ARL 
uh, to look at what further action they can take to make sure we move from uh, the deliberations that have been going on over this matter to action in getting this particular section of the road completed and to also make sure that they're doing everything possible to address the defects that they have identified on the Dawn Crossing. Peter Chapman, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister will be aware that the Stagecoach, Stagecoach Group has already postponed a planned bus route linking rural northeast communities to Aberdeen Airport using the AWPR. Now, every day that this road remains closed costs the northeast economy huge sums of money. Yep. How can any business make long term plans given the, the symbolic delivery of this road? And will the Minister apologise to the business community for the extra costs and disruption caused by these continuous delays? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, President Officer, uh, given that the Member's uh, view is that uh, there are costs being incurred by the North East economy every day by this road not been opening, just think what would have happened had the Conservative Government acted decades ago yeah. and actually building this Seven bypass years. not to support the North East economy. But we know the reality is when it comes to the North East of economy, all the Conservatives are interested in doing is draining money out of it into the London Exchequer Absolutely. rather than investing Absolutely. it into the North East economy in itself. So I'll take no lectures. No lectures from the North East Tories on making sure we do the right thing by the North East economy and investing uh, within it. But what I can assure the member of is that we are doing everything possible to make sure that the contractor agrees to this contract variation so we can get the bit of the road that could be opened up, opened up to traffic ASAP. And I hope the member who he gives the impression he's committed to the North East of Scotland will get behind the Scottish Government in making sure that the contractors get on to doing that, rather than deliberating about it, start committing action to getting the road opened ASAP. Yeah. Stuart Stevenson followed by Lewis MacDonald. Uh, can I welcome the rigorous checking of the Don Crossing that revealed that it was not currently fit for purpose. Opening a Duff Bridge wouldn't have been a good idea under any circumstances. Can the Cabinet Secretary uh, tell me if he's had any communication from the Conservatives in the light of what Liam Kerr demanded uh, for a contingency plan that suggests, as he seemed to, that we should be opening this bridge when it isn't yet safe? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Senator Officer, I'm not aware of uh, receiving anything from the member, Mr Kerr, on this matter in particular. Um, however, if he does have a particular plan, I'd be more than interested in hearing it. But he can be absolutely assured of uh, one thing we won't do is we will not risk uh, safety in regard to the work being conducted at the bridge. We'll make sure that that's carried out to the highest quality in a timely fashion. We're working with the contractor to make sure that is the case. And it's a bridge which will serve the community in the decades ahead. And what we won't do is we won't get into setting an arbitrary date that could compromise that work being carried out. I know that members might want to have a date that will be set. Now, the contracts are very clear, given the technical nature of this, they can't give a specific date because a key part of the work is weather sensitive. Had that remedial work not been necessary, then we would not be in this particular position. But given the nature of the remedial work that's now required, it is weather sensitive. And that's why the contractor is not able to provide a specific date. But as I said, when we're in a position to give a specific date, once it's been provided by the contractor, we were in a position to tell people about what that date will be. Lewis MacDonald, followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you very much. The Cabinet Secretary has appeared to confirm that the section of the road south of Craveston is physically finished and that the only obstacle to opening that section is the contractual dispute between the government and the contractor. If the contract is structured in such a way uh, that he cannot compel the contractor to move forward with opening this section, can he tell Parliament what incentives or penalties that he could apply that would produce that result and also what arbitration mechanism exists within the contract to allow him to force the issue? Cabinet Secretary. I'm saying also, the, as I mentioned earlier on, this is a contract which is a sale of a contract which has been used previously for the delivery of major road infrastructure uh, projects. I think the member may, raises a, a reasonable issue. But I think um, uh, after the opening of the AWPR, if there are some lessons that can be learned about how we draft some of these uh, contracts in the future uh, to address the type of issue which we've identified with the AWPR, then clearly that's a lesson that we should learn from. However, there is a solution and the solution is a variation to the contract. And that has been on the table with the contractor for a considerable period of time. The contractor then have to get agreement from their lenders in allowing that variation to the contract to be applied. 
There is nothing to stop the contractor doing that now. As was confirmed in the call I had uh, with Guilford Tri's chief executive on Monday, I was left with the clear impression it was with their lenders to then receive a letter 48 hours later to say that it's not with the lenders as yet. That is simply unacceptable. They should be able to put that to the lenders to get that bit of the road open. So it's not a contract that prevents it from happening. There is a mechanism which would allow this to happen through a variation. And that's why we want the contractor to move in that sooner rather than later. And I hope all MSPs for the North East will be very clear in saying to the contractor, put it to your lender to allow this section of the road that could be opened up is opened up sooner rather than later. Mike Rumbles, followed by Mark McDonald. The Minister is guilty of continuing to mislead the public with this statement. Does the Minister accept, does the Minister accept that the section of the road from Stonehaven to West Hill is physically ready and waiting to be opened? It is the Scottish Government that has mishandled the contract for opening sections of this road when they are physically ready. When will he take responsibility for this and stop blaming the contractors, the weather, public safety and anybody but the Scottish Government for messing up this contract in the first place. Cabinet Secretary. Second officer, uh, Mr Rumbles rarely raises to the occasion, and this is yet another example of where he's failed to even raise to the occasion. As a so-called so North East MSP, he wants us to ignore the issues of public safety in relation to these matters. I actually think, Mr Rumbles, your behaviour and your comments are utterly irresponsible in these matters. Rather than come in here and try and I suggest... Beg, I can't, excuse me, Cabinet I'm Secretary. Cabinet anyone, Secretary. Sorry, sorry, switch, sit down a minute. Is this a point of order? A, a point of order, really? It is a point Let of me order. find out. Well, Deputy Presiding Officer, it's my opinion that the, the Code of Conduct is being uh, broken here. It's because my opinion that counts. I'm sorry, Mr. Does, Rumbles. But I must be able to make it to you, Deputy Presiding. No, well, this isn't a debate, Mr. Rumbles. Please it's sit down. It's a robust exchange, in my view. Please sit down. I can't make a point of please, order. But, no, please sit down. I've ruled. Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, I, I suspect that Mr. Rumbles doesn't want to accept the fact that there, we are in a situation where the section of the road, which is complete and could be opened, requires a contract variation. But to agree that contract variation, no, it is a, is a contract between the Scottish Government and ARL. Uh, but the reality is that ARL have to agree to the variation in that contract, and to date they have not put that to their lenders. I know that Mr Rumbles often gets things wrong, and yet again he's just demonstrated them getting it wrong uh, and letting down the people of the North East. But you can be assured of one thing. Uh, given his own party's track record within the Scottish Executive and delivering for the people of the North East, yeah. we'll certainly take no lessons from Liberal Democrats in these matters. Mark MacDonald, followed by John Mason. I, I, I welcome and support the efforts from the Cabinet Secretary to get the Crabstone to Stonehaven section open as soon as possible. He'll be aware that if that opens prior to the Don Bridge being finished, traffic wishing to connect northbound from Crabston or southbound from Park Hill will have to divert through Kirkhill, Pitmeden or Wellhead's industrial estates and pot potentially Dice Village as well. So can I ask that he take steps now to liaise with local authority transport officials to ensure that appropriate traffic management is in place to ensure that residents and businesses are not disrupted as a consequence of any traffic movements that take place as a result of that? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, so officer, the member raises a, an important point because if the section does open, there will have to be temporary traffic management measures put in place uh, in a number of uh, different points. Uh, work has already been undertaken by Transport Scotland, uh, working with the lo local partners to identify what traffic management arrangements would have to be put in place. One of the things I've also uh, sought assurances on is that the necessary plans will be in place as quickly as possible so that they don't unduly cause a delay to the opening of the section uh, that could be opened at the present time. Uh, but the member raises an important point on behalf of his constituents, and that's an issue uh, which I know Transport Scotland have already given consideration to, uh, to make sure that the interim traffic management arrangements are appropriate to deal with any additional traffic. John Mason, and I'll take Alexander Burnett if you're both brief. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, the Cabinet Secretary said in his statement that the cost of these repairs lies with ARL and will not impact on the public purse. Later on, he said it's a matter of public record that ARL has advanced a commercial claim 
in relation to the project. Could you just explain how, th how these tie together? And Cabinet Secretary, if you could also be brief, please. Uh, Signor Officer, the, um, uh, the uh, cost of the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route is a, 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 a package which is some £745 million. That continues to be the case. The remedial work that is being carried out, for example, on the uh, River Don crossing is work that has to be carried out within that contract. So the cost of that is borne by the contractors, uh, given the, work that they have, the additional works that they have to undertake. As is um, often the case with the uh, major infrastructure projects, there will be uh, costs, additional costs that contractors may have not foreseen uh, as a part of the work that they are undertaking. That could be uh, costs which are associated with weather, it could be costs which are associated with uh, ground conditions that were not identified at an earlier stage, which has resulted in them incurring additional costs. Uh, that commercial claim relates to some of those uh, additional costs which the contractors have incurred as a result of uh, unidentified factors that have come up during the course of the construction phase its, itself. And they're dealt with, in, uh, and that's often the case with many uh, major infrastructure projects, uh, and the AWPR is no different uh, to that, and that will be dealt with in the same way that these types of commercial claims are normally dealt with through the different parties, as has been the case in the past with other major infrastructure projects. Mr Burnett, you must be brief. We're going uh, to the next Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Scottish Government why constituents are still contacting me regarding the impact the AWPR has had on their land and homes, with matters brought to the contractor's attention many months ago still not being acted upon? Uh, whilst the Cabinet Secretary can't offer any progress on the opening, can he at least reassure constituents that progress will be made on defective works and compensation claims? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, in relation to uh, compensation claims, they are a matter that have to go through normal due process and will have to be considered through the uh, parties who are involved in lodging any claim and then considering any claim of uh, payment. In terms of if there are specific areas where the member uh, can identify that there has been a lack of progress by uh, uh, ARL in relation to remedial works that are meant to carry out in relation to other uh, individuals' land in the area, I'd be more than happy for the member to write to me with that information and we'll ensure that the ARL border uh, is brought to their attention to take action on the matter. Thank you. That concludes questions. I apologise to Gail Ross, Jenny Mara. Let me conclude. I apologise to Gail Ross, Jenny Mara and Tom Arthur. And I fail to reach. Mr Rumbles. Deputy Presiding Officer, I rise to make a point of I order. Can't, I can't hear you. I rise to make a point of order uh, um, to ask whether you believe that Section 7, Paragraph 5 of the Code of Conduct has been breached during this statement of questions and answering. And I would ask you to look at the uh, official report and, and let me know, uh, please, whether in your view this Code of Conduct... I'm happy to do so, Mr Rumbles. I just don't want to eat into the next debate, but I will do so and we'll report back to you. And now we'll have to move on to the next item of business. Can I just let the front benches change places, please?